Welcome to Stoughton Media Access Cable's Community Forum Show. My name is Steve Kelly, I'll be your host today. And today we have the pleasure of bringing you new selectman, Mike Sullivan. Mike, how are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on the show today, Steve. Glad to have you. So, Mike, you're relatively new to town politics. Mm -hmm. yeah. What got you so interested? That's a good question. Um, so, like we were just talking, uh, born and raised here in Stoughton, um, grew up over on Columbus Ave, lived on School Street, now my wife and kids, uh, we live on Bento Street in North Stoughton. And, um, you know, just having that uh, sort of sense of pride in my community and, um, you know, wanting to get involved and uh, basically, you know, knowing that I want to be here in this town long term with my wife and kids, you know, why not, uh, why not help out to sort of potentially shape the town in, in the direction that I want uh, for my family. All right. So. Well, let's give a shout out to the kids. Sure. Uh, what are their names? Uh, so... So Barry, he's yeah. the oldest. He'll be four in June. Okay. Uh, Mary, she just turned uh, two in January. Michael is the baby. He's uh, about 10 months. Uh, oh. No, excuse me, 11 months. He'll also be a year in June. And then uh, we, we actually just found out number four is on the way. Wow. So, so. so Barry, Mary, Michael, and number four. To be determined. To yeah. be determined. <laughs> yep. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank All you. All right. So that, and it's, it's good to have people that have a vested interest, like the schools, for instance, for you are going to be a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you bring some additional skills that the board probably hasn't seen in a long time. And among those, you're a civic, uh, a civil engineer. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a registered civil engineer. I uh, predominantly do structural uh, engineering, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, analysis and, and design of, uh, of existing and, and new bridges. Wow. Uh, basically to make sure that their existing bridges are safe for, um, you know, pedestrians and for vehicular traffic and then uh, designing new structures for, you know, just for the use of, of, of the public good. Okay. I don't want to get shot in the arm because we didn't mention your wife. Let's do that. Sure. <laughs> sure. And my wife, Abigail, she's, yeah. uh, she's been here in Stoughton now uh, since we, we bought our house just about five, five or six years ago. Right. And she's a, a transplant from North Andover. So I, I persuaded her to uh, come down to Stoughton and, and this is the community we chose for, for our family. So. Very nice. And where'd you go to school? Uh, so I, I graduated Stoughton High and then I attended uh, UMass Amherst for my undergraduate. And then a couple years ago, I completed um, my uh, MBA at uh, UMass Lowell. So I'm I'm a Massachusetts boy. I, I, I don't stray too far from the state. Yep. And with a good solid engineering background. Which yeah, is, yeah. It brings a, a new level to the um, selectmen, especially with these uh, major new products, uh, projects. I'm sorry. You, you get to have a, a sort of a look at, you know, you know, are we doing the right thing structurally? Yeah. Do you actually get that deep or, or do you more or less say, I want the big picture, make sure we got the right people in place? You know, it's actually a little bit of both. So when we have... Uh, architects that, uh, for example, we have an, uh, an architect who recently completed uh, a facilities master plan, basically to take a look at all of the different facilities around town that are town owned and how do we bring them up to a state of good repair. So we have this five-year plan and uh, there are, you know, multiple recommendations from these architects. So I have an opportunity to get into the weeds and see, you know, yeah. individual line items or recommendations or, or um, you know, uh, areas that need improvement, uh, but then also, you know, taking a step back and seeing big picture, you know, how do we prioritize some of those spending needs uh, with, you know, obviously a very limited source of money and then um, a wide range of needs. So, you know, it, it's really both. You get a chance to really look at it, you know, find details, but then a big picture as well. Excellent. So, so Tell me about the adjustment phase, getting onto the board. What was that like, and what what are you? Where are you now, for instance? Yeah, you know, I would say that I'm still obviously learning. You know, I I just completed my first year uh, back in uh, last month in April, and I'm still learning. Um, you know, this is uh, only my second year uh, for town meeting as a selectman, and so you know, we we just completed um, in January and February the budgeting process and really preparing the warrant. That was my first time as a selectman. Uh, so hopefully going into year uh, two now, uh, as we start preparing this summer and the fall for next year's town meeting, I can bring that experience and, and make sure that we have articles that are you know, ready to go, uh, that have been vetted and uh, you know, will be you know, ready for action come next town meeting. So it really is um, 
it is a learning process being a selectman. You know, it's a uh, it's a volunteer position. You know, we don't. Um, you know, a lot of the people that serve on the board are bringing their own backgrounds. We're lucky enough that with the the current board, you know, we have uh, professional accountants on the board. We have uh, you know professional lawyers, professional engineers. You know, we have uh, Christine Howe works for a, a planning agency. So we have a we have a very diverse and uh, professional group uh, serving on the board right now. And I think at to the town needs it. I mean, this is the it is a, a big undertaking mm -hmm. to try and say, here's our limited resources. What's the most we can get done? What's the most effective use of our funds and our time? Yeah, and, and we're seeing that uh, even right now at town meeting. So going back to the facilities master plan, so we have um, uh, Fire Station 1, which everybody in the community knows. It's, it's old, built in the 1920s, I believe. Uh, it's well past its functional life. And so we have a list of recommendations from our architects uh, basically to make it um, safe, uh, livable, habitable for our firefighters who are, are using that building. And so we have uh, recommendations for this first year of approximately $1 million uh, to sink into this building. But we're also hearing from town meeting reps, you know, if we're going to be sinking this money in, you know, just the million this year, 2.4, I believe it is over five years, why not just suck it up and do the right thing and just build a new facility right now and stop, you know, sinking these costs into an aging facility that we might not get 15, 20 more years out of, you know, why not do the right thing and, and, and really go for it? So we have, um, depending on how town meeting goes, you know, what the will is of the body, that's an option that the town might look at. And we also have another article for uh, an underutilized piece of property, the armory, uh, which is currently just being used as uh, uh, storage for various town depart uh, departments. There could be an opportunity there to use it as temporary swing space for the fire department or public safety if we want to go full public safety. So there could be an opportunity to sink some of the money into the armory, use it as temporary swing space while we're either fully rehabilitating Station 1 or building new at a new site or new facility. So. And this is going to be a decision that uh, town meeting will have before them in, in the next few days. So. so what have you come to appreciate the most uh, from this experience? Well, you know, I, it's, it's kind of funny. So you really get uh, an opportunity to meet your neighbors, meet who's involved uh, in volunteering their time, and getting an, uh, an appreciation for their personalities, sometimes the, you know, the good, sometimes the bad but then still having a sense of appreciation for the fact that they, they are volunteering their time and that they do want to make the community, uh, you know, better. You know, even in um, even the most extreme and, and contentious examples, you know, if you look back to last summer, uh, some of those selectmen meetings and, and, and some of those uh, previous selectmen, you know, uh, Mr. Cohn or, or Mr. Brown, even though, you know, you might disagree with them, you might get contentious, you still kind of appreciate the fact that we're all volunteers and, you know, we're giving up our time for the community. So I, I would say that that's definitely something I'm taking away from this. Excellent. So if you could, um, if you could leave your mark, um, let's say that you make the full, is it three years is the, the term, right? Correct. What would you look back at as, um, if you could envision having completed three or four things, what would they be? So definitely having in place a strong town manager who has good experience running a municipality. Uh, and, and just so you have an update on that, we, um, we, we are working on engaging a consultant firm who will be doing the actual interview process and, and, and doing the headhunting for that. So we expect to have um, this consultant on board in, within the next month so that this summer we can begin receiving applications from, um, from potential applicants. Uh, so definitely having in place strong management, you know, that's, that's extremely important to me. But then also um, public safety, uh, and not just from a perspective of police, fire, I'm talking about transportation and pedestrian improvements as well. Uh, so this year at town meeting, we're advancing a few articles to, uh, to uh, reconstruct the, uh, the Tosca Drive intersection, which is mm -hmm. extremely unsafe. 
uh, you know, it's, it's a very heavily trafficked area with industrial users yeah, use on Tosca so Drive. Yeah, yeah, trying to come, come in and out of there. Yeah, and then we also have some, some other intersections in town which have just, they've, they've, they're very unsafe. You know, we, we have uh, Canton Street and School Street over by the, the, corner, uh, the, the, the corner cafe that used to be. And then uh, the intersection of Pleasant and, um, uh, Pleasant and Lincoln Street where Jimmy's Market is. And both of those intersects, uh, excuse me, intersections are just extremely unsafe. You know, they, they both have high volumes of crash rates. Um, um, and so uh, we have an article at town meeting this year to do the design for these uh, two uh, intersections. And we think that there could be an opportunity here that if we do the, des uh, do the design as the town, they could get picked up in the state transportation improvement program uh, potentially, and they'll pay for the construction. Well, it it kind of goes back to that shovel-ready project. You know, if a town has a shovel-ready project, there's an opportunity that, that the state's going to pick these up uh, and, uh, and, and get them on the tip in the next few years. So uh, definitely improving pedestrian and, 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 you know, public safety. And then also, also in public safety is just figuring out a solution for our facilities for public safety. You know, we have a police station that's it's, it's undersized for current usage. Uh, we have Fire Station 2, which was poorly designed, poorly sited, uh, and then Fire Station 1, which is it's, it's antiquated and it's, it's past its useful life. So I, I know those are, that's kind of a lofty goal to have a solution to that project, uh, problem, but it's, it's a problem that the town has known about for a few years, and I'd like to roll up my sleeves and, and be part of that solution. So. Yeah, I don't mind a lofty goal. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, the Harvard Book of Change, it's a uh, little thing, and it, it, has this, uh, it has this saying that BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. <laughs> so it's okay to have these like big stretch goals sure. and then you know, fill in as much as you can. And you know, the infinity loop, you just keep, keep pushing along. Sure. So, and you know, there's, there's also one other you know, thing that's it's, it's been a hot topic with our board uh, that I didn't touch upon, and that's uh, zoning. So, you know, we've seen over the past year uh, some of the um, limitations with our town zoning. We saw that with the Recycle Works facility, which is an industrial user mm -hmm. potentially being located near a school. That needs to change. We, we need to go about the process. We need to start that process of getting these, uh, these areas uh, zoned for residential or, you know, light commercial or, or, or something where we're not putting industrial users near schools uh, and then also in the downtown, uh, you know, so we've had uh, this sh this Schmood bylaw, Stoughton Center Mixed Use Overlay District, for I think uh, I think it was uh, enacted in 2008. So it's how many acronyms have you had to remember now? So <laughs> between town government and being an engineer, I feel all I ta all I do is discuss acronyms. Alphabet and, soup. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we've had this uh, Schmood bylaw for I think since 2008. And just in those 10 years, I think we've only advanced less than uh, 10 projects uh, using the Schmood bylaw. Um, and so I think it's about time that we, there are certain limitations on it, and I think it's too, rest uh, too restrictive for developers. And so we're actually partnering up with the Redevelopment Authority. Um, so at our meeting on Tuesday night, we created a, um, a downtown redevelopment task force um, and it's basically okay. comprised of a, a representative from the Board of Selectmen, the Planning Board, the Redevelopment Authority, um, Pamela McCarthy, who's our Economic mm -hmm. Development Coordinator. She does a great job, by the way. She, she does, yeah. She's, she's been a very valuable member okay. of the staff. And then um, we're actually going to be advertising for uh, one additional member, uh, hopefully a, uh, a member of the community and hopefully somebody with some uh, development or building expertise. Uh, and, and the goal of this um, task force is um, uh, to partner with uh, a consultant, potentially, uh, with, from the Redevelopment Authority on identifying some, some changes that could happen with our zoning bylaw in the center. Uh, and so the, the goal is to have some articles ready for next year's town meeting, or maybe the fall town meeting. Uh, we, we plan on, on doing a fall special. If there is uh, something that can be done uh, that's readily available that they can they can go after for the fall, so we want to take a look at the downtown zoning, and we want to be able to take a look, um, utilize the visioning that uh, w that we came up with from the master plan that was completed a couple years ago, 
uh, from the downtown uh, redevelopment plan that the, the, the redevelopment authority um, had, had, had created a couple years ago and just take, take some of these uh, visioning um, uh, processes and, and just actually turn it into action, you know, whether it's changes in zoning, whether it's identifying, you know, underutilized town assets in the center. Uh, and so we, this task force was created Tuesday and we're hoping that, uh, that we can identify some, some necessary changes in the downtown. So there is a bit of a challenge, I sort of throw this at you, like mm -hmm. um, there's a bit of burnout, I think, from all of the visioning and all of that. Yeah. So how do you address that? How can you perhaps show some leadership that would encourage people to hang in there Let's get involved. Let's see if we can finally do something. Yeah, well, you know, one of the more important things right now is um, I've noticed in my first year as selectman is that a lot of the different groups of volunteers in town, um, Mr. O'Regan used this term the other day, we work in silos. So the planning board works on their stuff, redevelopment, you know, they, they have their pet projects. Right, right. Board of selectmen, they have their, uh, you know, our pet projects. And we're working in silos, and so we're hoping that with this redevelopment task force, it's an opportunity to, to bring a little bit of everybody from these different groups and just make sure that if we have buy-in from all of these groups, we can focus on actually changing something and not just having each different group advance their own pet projects. And I've noticed that uh, just in the past you know, six months, having Mr. O'Regan as the chair, you know, we've, we've been partnering with the Redevelopment Authority quite a bit on, um, on, on acquisition of certain parcels. We've been working with community preservation. And so we're starting to see a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, better relationships with, with some of these other volunteer groups in town. And that's extremely important if we're, if we're serious about getting some of this stuff done. So. That's good news to hear yeah. that, I'll tell you. Yeah. So uh, not on a specific topic, but on your views on leadership and culture. I'm always interested because if you create a culture as a leader, which you assume the mantle of leadership when you become a selectman, um, the culture actually controls the outcome. So mm -hmm. how do you speak to that in terms of like creating a better culture for students? That's I know a, it's not one you're prepared for, but it's Yeah, like, you know, um, it's, it's kind of a funny question. So I almost... Uh, as a parent, you know, I always try to make sure that I'm setting a good example. You know, I, unfortunately, I fail at that quite a bit. You know, so you know, I'm sure we all do. Uh, the kids yeah. just, you know, they soak up everything. Yeah. So I'm always trying to make sure that I'm always uh, providing a good example for my children. And I think members of the board of selectmen need to do the same thing because they set the tone for all of the town government. Um, and and I think um, you know. Just in the past few months, you know, with Mr. O'Regan's leadership, we're seeing a different tone from our town government. I've noticed that there are, <clears throat> excuse me, I've noticed that town staff, uh, many of whom um, we've given them more opportunity to actually succeed at their job. You know, these, we pay these people a lot of money and, and a lot of them know, uh, a lot of them are experts at what they do. And so we need to, some, sometimes it's, it's, it's good to know when to sit back and, and let them guide the process. And we're starting to see that, especially with, with Pam McCarthy, uh, McCarthy, like you mentioned. She's been uh, helping the town out on um, the potential relocation of the post office. She's been our point of contact on that. She's been our point of contact with, uh, with the, the Randolph Savings uh, Bank uh, location in the center, which is another potential uh, acquisition that's going to be before town meeting this year. So in terms of culture uh, and, and leadership, it's it's important that the Board of Selectmen sets the tone for the rest of town government and then knows when to, how to use some of the assets and, and personnel at our disposal to get it done. So. Um, talk to me a little bit, um, we don't have very much time left, but sure. um, a little bit about uh, development here in town because you have two sides of a ledger, right? If yeah. you're going to be sustainable, you, you either can increase the income, which uh, personally I'm not happy with that, and I know a lot of people aren't. Yeah. You know, that means if you increase the income, it means you're, you're going to increase the taxes to get income, or you can restrict or hold to stricter guidelines for expenditures. Yeah. So another way to get more income is to increase the tax base as opposed to tax the people in the tax base more. Mm -hmm. um, your thoughts on how you might be able to 
increase the tax base? It's very important that we lessen the burden on taxpayers, especially residential taxpayers right now. Especially business taxpayers. I'm going to stick my <laughs> nose in there. Sure, there okay. you go. <laughs> so obviously the, the town just passed the debt exclusion for the high school. So it's, it's at this time, you know, people's paychecks are being stretched. So you know, we, we can't keep piling it on. There are a couple of things that the board's doing right now to, to hopefully set it up that we can, we can build um, you know, our revenues without having to raise taxes. So a couple months ago, uh, one thing that we did, we, we coordinated with our GIS department and we created a, uh, an inventory of every town-owned asset, uh, property asset in, in town, and we laid it out on our GIS map. So then this way we, um, we can uh, identify uh, unused assets for the potential of selling some of them off. Mm -hmm. uh, we've identified certain areas for, you know, for the potential for maybe a new public safety building, potential land swaps with, um, you know, uh, developers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also uh, the meeting with the redevelopment authority and this downtown task force, we also want to take a, a better look at our zoning and um, uh, basically create a system where uh, developers have, um, they can come in as of by right and, um, and, and build and, and, and develop certain parcels without having to go through this cumbersome uh, permitting and, and special permit requirement process. Um, you know, as I'm sure you're familiar, if you want to uh, build a development, there are certain soft costs that developers have to uh, pay for. Uh, and, and the list in order to, you know, for example, put a building in the, in the Schmood, you know, you might have to hire a traffic engineer to do, you know, a traffic study. You're going to have to hire an architect to come up with renderings. You're going to have to hire civil engineers for, uh, for your, your, um, Septic your, your and all plan. That too. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the, the soft costs are just, are astronomical, as well as still having that risk of not even knowing if your project's going to be approved or not. So we're asking developers to, to bear all of these costs, and then there's still risk for them at the end of the day. And so if they look at a certain area in town that might not have a return on their investment with those soft costs, you know, it's asking a lot for developers. And I think that's why we're seeing some of these projects stall in the downtown, plus some other hurdles that we as a town are imposing because, you know, in my opinion, the Schmood bylaw is just, it's too restrictive and, and we need to work mm -hmm. uh, on, on lessening some of those restrictions in the coming years. So I want to make it easier for developers um, and make more, you know, uh, as of right uh, opportunities in our zoning throughout the town. And we've actually identified four areas uh, throughout the town that we're going to be looking at at the next year. Um, and we just started this week with the downtown by forming the downtown uh, task force. So. Excellent. So I'm going to, uh ask for some public service announcements sure. right now from the, uh, the group out back. And I also want to acknowledge that Roy Cohen is out there, Gina Coe, and uh, Leo McGowan's on the cameras, Dave Young helps us out, and Jeff Pickett, and Mike Hammond. So uh, let's see if we can get the PSAs up on the screen. And we'll... Hi, it's Gary LaPierre, and the crew wants to thank mm, 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 Maxie's Delicatessen. That's at 117 Sharon Street in Stoughton. They're 781-341-1662. American Cancer Society, yes, they're looking for volunteers, drive cancer patients to and from their treatments. 1-800-ACS-6662, or just go to www.cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry in St. Anthony's Free Market, 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallagher. That's at 781-341-0611 or 781-341-0549. Meals on Wheels, just ask for Jessica. You'll find her at 781-344-8882, extension two. Stoughton Penny Saver, our business is advertising your business, they tell us. 27 Rose Glen Street, Stoughton, 781-344-4833. Community Forum Showtimes in Stoughton. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m., Monday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 5 p.m. It's on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28. All comments and suggestions welcome. Contact us at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Samaritans, they're at 41 West Street on the fourth floor in Boston, 02111. 
Their phone number is 617-536-2460. 24-hour helplines for Samaritans. And the number is 877-870-HOPE. That's 877-870-4673. Samaritans, you can find them at 800-252-TEEN. That's 252-8336. Or find them online at SamaritansHope.org. All right, so we're back here in studio. Uh, Mike Sullivan, a new selectman, but you know, one year under your belt. Mm -hmm. So we only have uh, just a couple of seconds left. And I, sure. I want to thank the audience for watching. Sure. But uh, just to give you like a three point, here's what I want to get done. Oh, well, um, yeah, I, I think I already kind of talked about some of the priorities mm -hmm. that we're working on. And, and, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't just take this opportunity to uh, kind of persuade some other community members. Uh, people sitting in on the sidelines, you know, please get involved with your community. Uh, in the next few weeks, the Board of Selectmen will be advertising for, um, you know, our annual appointments to various boards and committees. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you might be interested in, you, in, uh, you know, please feel free to, to reach out to any member of the board and, and talk about the opportunity. But, uh, you know, stop sitting on the sidelines and, uh, you know, join us in, in making Stoughton a better community. Well, we want to thank you as well, um, all of the selectmen, when they put all of their, their hard work and effort trying to uh, take this amorphous uh, globe and, and maximize its yeah. value for everybody. So uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you. And I want to send another shout out to Leo McGowan, who's behind on the cameras, does a great job for us every week, in and out. Uh, Gina Coe's back behind the desk, and she's helping us out, moving things along with Roy Cohen as well. So uh, we want to thank you very much for watching and we look forward to uh, doing more shows on Community Forum. Thank you very much.